What's good, YouTube? It's Mirror Squared back in another Squid AO. Now that the format is finally shaping up and we're getting Phantom Nightmare in less than two days, there are a couple of new developments in the format for playing Snake Eyes, Fire King, as well as Pure Sinful Spoils, but I wanted to make the Squid AO to tell you guys about a couple of tips and tricks that you should know for the format, especially if you're playing these top tier decks, because this is actually really, really hard. Being a close to tier zero format, there are a lot of uh, intricacies and technical play is extremely important in tier zero formats like this, where everyone's kind of playing the same cards more or less, and you really have to know the insides and outs to do well. So the first tip I want to tell you guys is making Appaloosa on your end board. Obviously, this is one of the main monsters that you can make as a form of interruption because it has multiple in the gates. But I see some players actually ending off with the Appaloosa with multiple um, negates, so like higher attack than 1600. And personally, I'm just not a fan of that because the way the format kind of is, from what I found in testing, is that a lot of board breakers are prevalent and uh, cards, especially like Triple Tactics Talent, are very, very common. And it's obviously easy to bait out in interaction, uh, for example, an Appaloosa and Negate in the main phase. And when that happens, uh, the Tactics becomes live and they take your Appaloosa, which is very, very detrimental because it can now be used against you to push through your opponent's plays, right? They basically have multiple Negates in Appaloosa to get your hand traps. Whereas if you only had it to uh, two negate, so like 1600 attack, let's say we use the first negate on a uh, monster effect that they were using, then it becomes a lot safer because even if tactic steals, all we really need is to kind of bait out the Appaloosa worst case scenario with one other card, right? So something like an effect failure, you know, just kind of deals with that. It's not the most ideal situation because we're still trading two cards for uh, one essentially, but I mean, Tactics is just such a ridiculous card that uh, you have to play to the best of your ability when that card is uh, resolving. So uh, having an Appaloosa with less then two negates, in my opinion, two is the max that I want to put on to 1600. And there's not really an argument otherwise, because you always should have a way to protect it from being destroyed by battle. Whether that means you have like a Kirin in your hand that you can pop another fire monster on board and then trigger the Garenux in your grave. So that comes back, you know, you dump another copy of Kirin and then you get to pop the monster that's threatening its ring over the uh, Appaloosa by battle or uh, just whatever else you have. You always have like a way to interact with them. And if they're actually entering the battle phase to swing over something, what I realized in this format is uh, OTKing your opponent is really, really big, especially when Fire King boards actually end on multiple cards in their hand and they have like the full setup. When you go second, you kind of have to uh, sometimes just OTK your opponent because you're not going to be able to uh, survive the onslaught of the card advantage that they have during their next turn, right? So you really want to push with like Zealantis or maybe Axis Code and try to game them. So if they're actually entering battle phase to swing over the Appaloosa, that's always good news for us because even in the worst case scenario where we have no way to protect it by battle, we're still trading the Appaloosa for their battle phase. So whatever board they're going to make through the rest of what we have, you know, cards in the graveyard like Princess, Karunix, and our hand traps, on our next turn, we're still going to get a next turn, which means that we're going to be able to push back through their board with all the resources that we accumulated from going first, right? So yeah, they're really, really short. Uh, I, I definitely want to see more Appaloosa, I think around 1600, uh, the max, just because Talents is so prevalent. All right, tip number two. I had this thought in my head and it was actually interesting to see people actually make this play in the Ironmans over the weekend, but how this works is uh, you're getting rid of your Fire King Island off of your table. Because Fire King Island is obviously a detrimental effect that says if this card is sent to the graveyard or banished, you have to pop all monsters you control mandatory effect, right? So what you can actually do is make a really interesting play and that's actually go into the Nightmare Unicorn to spin back your own Fire King Island and that kind of deals with a couple of things. Number one, it means that you can actually place a copy of another field spell over it. So if you happen to play the Tempo of the Snake Eyes, you can actually now play that card without uh, regecking your whole board, basically. Because if you have Fire King Island on the field, even if you activate another field spell, it leaves the field, so then you have to pop your monsters. Now, the other thing they actually accomplish by shuffling away the Fire King Island is you actually play around removal-based effects like Cosmic Cyclone, which are very high impact when you do leave that field spell on your table, because that means when this gets banished, we're going to effectively Raigeki our board. So our opponent's Cosmic Cyclones just become Raigekis, right? So being able to uh, spin that away protects you from Cosmic Cyclone, which I thought was interesting. And if you play Relinquished Anima, it actually points up. So what you can then do is actually have a Nightmare Unicorn that points down and is co-linked to the Anima, which can then be used to target your own Fire King Island, shuffle it back, and then get a draw card as well, because the Nightmare Unicorn was co-linked. Yes, Unicorn can actually spin back your own cards, guys. It's really, really interesting that this is one of the only cards in the game that allows you to target your own cards. And um, I, I think it's... 
It's nice. It's just something I want to bring to your attention. Personally, I don't think it's super practical. Why? Because the drawback is you have to play, obviously, Nightmare Unicorn and Relinquished Anima. And everyone knows that the extra deck for this deck is insanely tight. We're already making a lot of concessions. We're not able to play cards like Typhon. We're not going to be able to play cards like the Garunix XYZ in some cases as well, because you just don't have the space, right? And having two extra monsters that you have to play in your extra deck that don't really accomplish anything else other than being you know marginally worse toolbox extra deck monsters in like sp little knight or link Rebo in the case of relinquished anima because you're basically never going into this card link Rebo allows you to duck uh imperm and valor and you have to play these two cards which means you're not playing two other cards in your extra deck that are probably very close to being mandatory and higher priority in the fire king deck so all of that to kind of play around cosmic cyclone i don't know if it's really worth it but this is one of the only ways that you can actually get rid of the Fire King Island because obviously you can't put it in the graveyard. You cannot banish it. You have to either bounce it back to your hand or spin it back to your deck to circumvent that Rageki effect. But I, I, I just thought it was really interesting to bring it up to your guys' attention. Maybe you can experiment with it. Maybe there's some way to make it optimized. And if Cosmic Cyclone is like such a commonly cited card after the smoke clears with meta, uh, then maybe this is a play that you guys can consider. Really quickly, if you guys aren't already subscribed to the channel, definitely consider hitting that subscribe button at the bottom. It'll go a long way to support the channel. Other than that, thanks a lot for tuning in. All right, guys, next tip is molding your end boards to play around popular cards in the format, right? There are so many different board breakers that are actually very high impact that deal with a lot of boards. And one thing that you can actually do to play around a crucial card that's very, very devastating called Super Polymerization is actually making sure so your end boards cannot be super polyed. Obviously, I see a lot of players kind of ending on like the Ambla Wheel plus like another Fire Monster, whether it be Flamberg or maybe an Arvada. What you can actually do here is link off the Amble Whale to go directly into Zealantius because Zealantius actually requires one effect monster, so it fits the Link 4 bill if you use the Link 4 monster to make it. And um, you obviously want this co-linked to the Appaloosa or whatever else you have because World Sea Dragon Zealantius has the effect where during the battle phase, quick effect, you can pop cards on the field equal to the number of co-linked monsters on the field. Generally, you probably want it somewhere either uh, in the zone where it can point to uh, both sides or in the middle zone because when you do bring back the princess, you can actually easily co-link it to the Zealantis. So sometimes if you don't have Appaloosa, what you can actually do is use the effect of Zealantis to reposition your board so that Zealantis is actually in the middle column or has the both sides free for the princess to be co-linked. Uh, just one thing to note. But the reason why you would make Zealantis is because it's obviously water. So Super Poly is not going to be able to fuse two fires into the Mud Dragon, which is really annoying, right? Like Super Poly is one thing clearing the board but then mud dragon is the other issue because this card has a quick effect where you can change the attribute to fire and then for the rest of the turn you're not going to be able to target your opponent's fire cards which means that cards like imperm or valor or uh, even princess are not going to be able to be resolved right you barely have any cards in your utility that can deal with a non-targeting effect for example kieran maybe is one of them uh Ambler will i can think of another the effect to banish from your graveyard to pop something those are basically the only effects but even those effects require you to target a lot of times for them to be live right so uh uh, this is why Super Poly is just such a crazy card. Mud Dragon just makes it so much crazier. And being able to go to Zealantis is really, really nice because this means that we're not going to be able to get Super Poly on the first action. And we do have a Fire Monster that fulfills the requirement for the Princess to come back and then also trigger the Ikarunix. Now, here's where things get a little messy um, because if you're playing around Super Poly, sometimes you inadvertently play into other cards like Triple Tactics Talent, right? So... Obviously, if we're making Zealantis here, uh, they have talents and they bait out an effect. All they, they can just easily steal our fire monster, our Avada, and then we don't have anything to pop with Princess and our Grunix and everything else is dead, right? So in this situation where you have to play around tactics or super poly, personally, I'm gonna play around tactics just because I think it's a lot more popular. The problem with Super Poly is that if people start playing around it, a lot of people are gonna be dropping Super Poly. And then the other requirement is obviously you have to play the Mud Dragon in the extra deck, which is just really, really hard to fit in. I realize that the extra deck is so tight that most players are probably siding Super Poly, if anything, because you have to side the Mud Dragon. It's just like generically not that great against all the decks, right? So um, if they're siding it for the mirror, I could see that they side the, uh, the Mud Dragon. So I'd rather just play around Tactics, which is a lot more popular in my opinion. Now, the reason why I would recommend that you actually make Zealantis in game one to play around uh, both Super Poly and Tactics is when you have Kieran in your hand, because now you just don't care about Tactics or Super Poly, right? Obviously, Super Poly is dead in this situation. If we bait out, uh, if our opponent baits out like an Appaloosa and they go Tactics to steal, 
Um, for now, we have Kirin, so we're protected, right? We can actually just chain the effect of Kirin to pop the fire monster that we have on the board. And now, if they steal the fire monster, it doesn't really matter because we're going to be able to trigger the Garunix on the new chain, right? So even if they steal the fire monster, it doesn't matter. Uh, if they steal the Appaloosa, it doesn't really matter either because we can obviously structure things. If we're popping the Amblo Whale, we can chain the effect of Amblo Whale, chain the effect of Garunix, so we can kind of uh, start playing around that. Uh, makes it a lot safer because you can kind of play around into tactics and play around Super Folly at the same time. Uh, them stealing Appaloosa, I guess, is still like not the best situation. But ideally, you do want to play around cards. If they had tactics to steal Appaloosa, it wouldn't have mattered anyways. So that's why, in my opinion, I'm definitely going to be making Zealantis anytime that I have the Kirin plus the Fire Monster play around Super Folly. And anytime that I don't actually have the Kirin access and I have two fire monsters on the board, I'm just going to leave them there because I feel like this is better. I'd rather play around the tactics guaranteed than play around the Super Poly. So if I have two fire monsters on board, they steal a fire monster. I don't really care. I have the other one to bring back with Princess and then use the effect of Garunus to come back, right? So as long as you have a fire monster, you're playing. So yeah, sorry guys, that was really long-winded. I don't know how to accurately explain this, but long story short, try to play around Super Polymerization by linking off your Link 4 into Zealantis wherever possible. Um, in the case of Tactics as well, try to play around that, but try to play around Tactics over Super Folly is higher prioritization. Okay guys, this is another cool way that you can actually play around Super Folly Immunization by having two or more fire bodies on the board. Anytime that you actually have Flamberg Dragon on the table alongside the other monsters, because Flamberg Dragon obviously it triggers in the graveyard, so if our opponent does use the effect of Super Folly, we lose our monsters, they get the Mud Dragon, which is fine, because in this case, we are going to be able to trigger the effect of the Flamberg to bring back our fire monsters. And as long as you have the fires, you're kind of in a decent spot. But the only unfortunate part about that is Mud Dragon does turn off your targeting again, so you're not gonna be able to use cards like Promethean Princess or Garunix. But obviously having the fire bodies on board makes it a lot safer than if we didn't. So um, if you guys have no way to realistically play around Super Poly and Tactics, I would recommend trying to get like a Flamberg Dragon on the table because that kind of insulates you a little bit. You get the two bodies back on board. Worst case scenario, you can probably get the Princess on a non-fire monster if they're calling fire with Mud Dragon. Uh, or just have the bodies on board, which is safe. As long as you have fire bodies, you're generally in a good spot. Now, one other thing I realized about the Flambrook Dragon during the traditional play with the IP Mascarena in your Spell and Trap Zone, a lot of players are doing in the standby phase or the draw phase, first action to bring back the IP Mascarena on our opponent's turn. I realized that this actually does play into a top deck six card infinite impermanence because your opponent just doesn't have any cards on the table. So if they top deck that, they could just use it on the Flamberg Dragon and negate it right away. So it might actually be better to wait until the main phase after your opponent commits a card to the table before using the effect of Flamberg Dragon. Now, the caveat is this obviously does play into Triple Tactics Talent harder, but like you are probably going to use an effect anyways in the main phase. So it really does depend on like what you have. Obviously, if you have like a weaker hand with a hand trap that you just can't afford them ripping, or you just can't afford them to actually play the tactics as a first action into your board after you uh, Flamberg in the main phase, then maybe use it in draw or standby phase. But that's just one thing to note. Like playing around the top deck infinite impermanence is a non-zero chance. So definitely consider that uh, in your uh, testing. And then really quickly, the last thing about Flamberg that I realized, guys, you can actually use it as pseudo disruption in the form of uh, resurrecting a opponent's spell and trap monster. You don't have to do your own, right? This card can actually do your opponent's as well during your opponent's turn. So a lot of times where they're actually banking on using that populace in the spell and trap zone to send off of something like original simple soil snake eye, you can actually just counter that by using the effect of Flamberg Dragon to resurrect the populace to your side of the table and then also get the search effect, assuming that you uh, have a target to search for, right? So that's kind of interesting because uh, you realize that, like, the Fire King deck starting off, you do require a lot of cards to send for Black Witch or for the effect of Original Sinful Spoils. So having that in the uh, face-up Spire Trap Zone is really, really important as a resource to send for the cost. So you cutting them off early in tandem with whatever else you have on the board and in your hand means that they're actually going to have to send their own monster or start committing extra resources to that. So uh, this is just one thing to consider. Obviously, if you have IP Masquerade, it's a lot better to just go an IP SP or Appaloosa or something along the lines. But I'm just saying like if uh, you didn't have anything and you just had to end on a Flamberg Dragon, like a naked one, then you could definitely use it on your opponent's spawn trap zone to resurrect their monsters and that uh, becomes pseudo disruption as well. So guys, uh, really little small things, I guess. But yeah, I want to tell you guys about a quick little couple of tips so far. Let me know what you guys think in this video today. And if you guys have any good tips about Fire Kings, let us know in the comments below because I would love to see uh, new interactions about this deck. I love how this uh, deck is ramping up. It's a lot of fun, honestly. Technical play, deck building, everything, yada yada. But yeah, guys, thanks for tuning in. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.